Thanks everyone for coming. Excited to uh, talk. This is my second Ned Camp session I've spoken at. So not exactly the most uh, experienced speaker here, but last year I did config sync where I went over kind of the, the basics, the, the stuff you would find online and quick tutorials, you know, like, all right, export, export, you get really excited. And then, you know, then you run into problems. And so that's what this one's about. It's like, let's talk about the more advanced parts of it. Uh, so who am I? Um, so I, I put my, this up here. So my son said, I was like, what do I do? And he's like, well, you, you make and code websites for money. You also help people with websites. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. That's, that's my bio now. I'm very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Um, he does think I'm from the dinosaur era. So I told him to make me websites for 20 years. And he's like, did you choose the little on rocks? Um, so he, he's, he's a charmer. Um, I've, uh, I worked at a corporate database administrator and they're like, they wanted to see the data. So websites was an easy, fun way to do that. And then I got into agency work where they cared about what the websites looked like. Um, but I did get into Drupal around tail end of Drupal 7 and then Drupal 8 came out. And then I discovered config sync soon after that and I was hooked. So I've been a big fan of uh, config sync ever since then. And thank you for being here, guys. So, um, I want to kind of know what room I'm talking with here. So, like, show of hands, like, who uses config sync? Okay. Um, and if you feel you're an expert at it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, you get to correct me if I do anything too stupid I up here. Mostly here to get somebody else to try to use their config split stuff. So. Okay. Well, we, I do get to that at the very end. Is, cool. is, is, it, it's sort of like config sync all comes on, uh, config split. I assume yeah, we're all good. everything, I can raise my hand to the next one, but I want to hear another right. All right. And then, you know, I have the room, the aliens. No. No. All right. <laughs> you can't spell it in the back. So we're going <laughs> to, hey, I have the platform. Um, so we're going to do a quick review. We're going to keep it pretty quick. This is my philosophy. And you will hear me get a little preachy at times about config and different things. But config is code. Um, I'm a big, big proponent of that. Like, your configuration is part of your code. Should be treated as part of your code. Um, I mean, sometimes you can spend weeks just, you know, finding that one checkbox that's very important that you didn't know existed. Um, and then a little caveat here. Don't put any authentication credentials in code. And that's for, you know, you've got your, let's say you're connecting to authorize.net for payment gateway. And the, and the UI just uses this beautiful field that says enter in all your authentication to it. I'm like, don't do that. Just, there's other ways, don't do that. Um, but I just want to put that down there as the, the second thing. Um, so when I first got into config sync, it was all beautiful. You had the local development, you had the staging and the production, and you work on local and you, Meant to, you know, you config and you push up the staging, push it up to production. And then, you know, you, you bring the production database down to, to local development and it's all refreshed, you're happy. And, and then, um, you know, then the real world hits. But that, you know, in theory, that's your, you know, 30 minutes of YouTube looking at config sync, you get past that. Um, so, and fig flows up, content flows down, everything is great. Uh, life happens. Uh, real world problems are the worst. They have, you know, there's requirements that break the wonderful diagram and make things sound so elegant. So then you start scrambling of how to solve the problem of config. Um, so as we're here to discuss today, we're just going to try to keep it, you know, how, how do we do this the right way? Um, I inherited a lot of sites over the years where I've seen other people's methods of config sync. And some of them make my eyes twitch. And I just want to help Drupal community not make my eyes twitch. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go, you know, what can go wrong? So uh, one of the things that comes up pretty often in this, I don't necessarily have a huge elegant solution for, but when config requires content, um, the Warpin code and content can get very muddy. Um, for example, you're creating a view and you say, I have this view, but I, uh, I need to limit it to nodes to the taxonomy ID of five. Well, you know, 
taxonomy ID 5 is content. It's not config, but you're putting it in there. And uh, same thing with new blocks. You're like, hey, I'm making a new block for the blog. I need this in the aside. But, you know, you create that block on dev and you create it on production, you're getting different UUIDs. The configs won't work. They, they, they will yell at you when you try to import them. Uh, so that's one of the problems that happens. Um, the other one is, you know, you get everything going, your, your workflow's going great, and then you add clients. The clients don't work on, on dev, and so then they start going into production and modifying things, uh, web forms or whatever they run into. I uh, usually find web forms and blocks are the ones where they're usually modifying things. Um, then we have, uh, this one starts getting really long, right? But when you're dealing with, you don't want the same config for every environment. Your local environment, you, you may want you know, email reroute. You may want stage file proxy for your local development. And for staging, you may want reroute email in place. And you know, one of the things I've seen for this is where people will just like, oh, I'll remember to turn it on. That's not, at some point, there's an angry phone call with the client. Um, so we're going to be going a little bit over this. this is the sort of the end of the discussion. We'll be going over this with config uh, split. Um, but we want to show a way of having different configurations for your different environments. Um, so this is the first one. This is when I said, like, it's, it's muddy waters. I don't have an amazing solution for this, right? Um, so we have an example of um, a view for filters show only blog items uh, of, of type business. Uh, the other one would be you've got some block needed. So we were talking about that. There's really only two solutions that I've seen, and neither one is like amazing. So one is this is the one I usually stick with. I need a new block, I need a taxonomy, I go to production, I make it. And I just pull that production database local, and then I create the config that I need, I create the view, I, I, I output the block, and I get the config from there. The um, and then, and then, 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 then it comes to like, I need to deploy to staging. I forget to refresh staging's database and it blows up, but that is, that is part of it. But that's the method I usually use. There is a module out there called structure sync, and there's even two ways to run it. And the idea is that you can specify that a menu or, a, you know, menus, blocks or taxonomies can be config and you can push them up. You can push them up in different ways. You can say like, hey, wipe out what's there, replace it with this, or you can say just add, which even makes me bugs me even more because now you're talking about like, well, what's in the code doesn't match what's in the content now when you brought the content in. But I, I, I avoid this, but there are situations where you may want to use that model. Every website, the client and hosting, there's a lot of factors into what's going to happen. Um, when production settings are modified, um, this is something I've seen many times where it's just like, well, hey, clients shouldn't have done that. Push it back, right? And that could be because there's a bunch of scripts already in place. There's, you know, you're inheriting something and that's just the way it's been done. And that's not the biggest fish to fry yet. So you just continue forward with it. Um, I, I do find it funny when, when that happens, but it's, you know, that's what backups are for and, you know, you, you want to make sure you have good backups. Um, the Use the config read only. This one um, I have used, and it is one where the client went in one day and they tried to change a setting, and then they, they got very upset, like, hey, why can't I, I want to check this box, and it won't let me. And it's like, well, because I put this on. Um, and the, the client wasn't as bothered when we talked about in that particular instance, it was to save them money. It's like the, the budget was the, one of the biggest constraints with them and we needed to make sure that we had more control over certain things and we weren't spending time, we were doing many deployments on a regular basis and we needed to make sure we could handle that. Uh, there is a setting, this is something that um, when I first started using this, I don't think you had this, where you can make sure the UI is the only one you can't edit. Is that a module? Yeah. Okay. Config read only is a module. Um, and basically, it's like if you enable it, you go on the back end, you try to do anything that would modify config, it won't let you. So it locks down production so that production doesn't get modified. Um, 
but this is this also goes into like if you're going to have an announcement at the top of your website don't make it a block make it a content type where there's a view with a block output that will that way your config doesn't change every time they make a new announcement right or if you're doing a web form and you have content on there try to make that a block that gets included so that they can modify the content of the block without modifying any config yeah is the idea that if you set that pattern early on out the gate that you yes. come up with a solution that you go so yeah config read only you, you set that on production you did you know like local you just make all the edits you want and it, it it allows you to have that that diagram from earlier where it just only flows upward there's no way for production to have anything change but the reason why you make it for UI only is so that um, we need to deploy your your scripts need to be able to actually modify the configs. Uh, so originally, I used to have to go in and manually disable the module, then import it, then turn it back on. Um, so that was the next feature. Um, I do this on some websites. Uh, it depends on the client, right? But um, we basically, I go into production. I say, I go to, you know, site settings configuration. I go into what, what does config sync say? I'll say, yeah, there's no changes. I'm like, oh, you can deploy. But if it tells me that there is a difference and they modify a form, a block, um, or you know many other things that they might do, um, it'll let me know that. And in that case, normally it's uh, like if it's Pantheon, I just pull down the database local, I make sure I check out to the right Pantheon tag, and I do a config export, and I merge it in with what I'm doing, and it just it, it extends the deployment time. Uh, there there can be issues with this, no matter how you do it, where you end up in a situation where the production modified a config that you also modified locally. And that's, there is no fun way to do that, but it, it's always solvable. You just, you know, always have backups. Um, and sometimes I have gone into YAML files and manually, you know, merge them together, or I'll cheat and I'll just bring up the UI interface on production and I'll try to make the same setting changes in mine and not merge the code. We'll just make those edits on the branch I'm working on. Um, I've seen this used multiple times, so I wanted to bring it up. Um, there's a module called config ignore, and you basically say, like, there's a client where, like, they're always modifying XYZ content type, or they're always modifying uh, this block or this um, web forms. And so they're like, yeah, we'll just do all the config sync except for web forms. And this one, this is one of those things that makes my eye twitch. I don't like this one. I, I say void if all possible. This config is code, and if you're ignoring config, then your code is incomplete in my mind. So will this exist? And I run into it. I, I don't like it, but I've seen it as like a band-aid where it was just like they didn't know what to do. So it was, let's just ignore this, and the clients can just gonna keep modifying that. We're just gonna push all the rest of the config, and it still is a time saver for the developer. It's just to me the the code at that point is incomplete let's see yeah <laughs> he is watching don't do that <laughs> yes can i just say one thing about big ignore i found it really useful for if you have modules that require you put in api keys mm -hmm. that are then going to be incomplete so you're not putting api keys in your code base which then you have a tech could get problem somehow you're exposing those so ignoring like those fields and including it either in production or in a secret file. I've been fortunate in most of the situations I use a dot ENP. Yeah. And then I do config override and there's a um a module that you can install that will then tell the user that that field has been overridden what the overridden field is. So it doesn't end up in code. But yeah I actually dealt with that first slide. Don't don't put authentication uh, tokens in uh, and so figure the code and don't put authentication tokens in. There are weird ways around it. Recently all Ansible. Um, different configs for different environments. So now, now we're getting to sort of the meat of where, where I'm going with like, hey, every Drupal site I work on, I want this sort of setup going. Like I've been evolving, I've been, um, I don't know if it's my laziness or what, but there's been ways where like I've been avoiding config split, avoiding config split, and and trying to get away with just dot env variables or, you uh, for example a dot env I can set the setting is this on this environment, the setting is this on this environment, but it doesn't handle things like 
enable this module. And I would always be like, well, if I need that module enable, I'll just put it manually do. But it's not good for certain circumstances. Um, don't just ignore things. Um, manually enable them as needed. I'm guilty of doing that in the past. Um, you know, and email reroute is the classic one, right? It's on staging. And then you have a client with a lot of emails. You don't want to send out emails to, to their users uh, unexpectedly. Um, so I did. I started off with .env extensively. I was doing that with a lot. Um, it was never hard to get. Stored lots of credentials. Um, and I think it was just I had a lot of sites that really the only difference that I needed between the environments was the, the credentials. Um, so env really was a good fit in the beginning. And then as we got different Drupal sites, uh, things did not always work out. Um, and then we're going to get a little bit into the settings asterisk uh, PHP and config split. All right, so let's talk back. Um, I do use env still um, on most environments. If there's um, a Drupal UI config acting for authentication credentials, don't want those any of the YAML files. Um, I use, this is the module speaking of early config override warn will give a graphical representation to the UI to indicate if anything's been overridden. Um, and so if you overwrite things in settings.php or, you know, you, that is a really nice thing to see at the top of the page. Um, you know, for e-commerce, it would say, look at ENV would be the, the, what I would set it to. And then at the top of the page it would actually show you what was being used. Um, let's see. You can have settings and services filed based on which environment is loading the site. And that is, that is the huge power. Uh, you combine that with config split and you end up with a really powerful environment locally on your staging, on production, and, and just, it took me a long time to get to that point. It took me a long time to wrap my head around all the different aspects of that. But once it clicked, it was very powerful. Um, and it was much cleaner, much easier to copy to the next site once I understood it. Um, and it's just dependent upon your hosting environments and your local setups. But once you get it all set up for one, it's it's fairly uh, copy passed out to something else. Um, so yeah, it's, um, you know, I might, you know, you go to sites default and you have your settings.php and I'll, I'll have sites where it's like, oh, I got settings.pantheon.php, settings.platform.sh, settings.local, and a settings or services for each of them. Um, and so services generally is just like my services.local enable twig debug. So I get an easy, you know, I don't have to do anything with that. Um, then the settings.php uh, lets me do other things. So and we'll sprinkle them together. This is screen caps. Um, I didn't want to demo things today, but I took some screen caps and I think I, I hit client intro on this. So um, this is an example of you install config split in Drupal. You get a backend interface to it and you set up each of these, right? And this one, there's some migration going on, but there's more than three, more than just, you know, development local type thing. So, um, but in this case, I took a screen grab from my local environment, which was on Lando. So you can see here where it's it's telling you, this is the active one. These are all inactive. Um, so Drupal now knows that you're on a local environment. And the question is, well, how does it know that? What does it do now that it knows that? Um, and that is the really cool thing. So config split really does let you say like, you have your your sort of uh, config common, config all. Every you know every uh, Drupal environment you have has these configurations. Uh, an example would be of that would be your four dot extensions, because that should only have the modules that are on every every environment you have. Um, but then each one of these can have their own folder inside of your config sync folder. And you're able to Drupal, and we'll get into how it knows this, but Drupal knows that I am on my local environment. And so now it's going to load the all config 
and it's going to care about what's inside that subfolder. So when you click into that, you know, it's basically saying, oh, yeah, this is this. Uh, it's going to be stored in the folder config local. Um, if you scroll down on the page, you would have seen this, and it's like, which modules are config split? It's like, well, stage file probably is one of them. Um, and so now you do a config export, it's going to export all your config changes to the config common. And for just those modules that I selected in there, it's going to export those configs into this folder. So when I go to staging or production, they don't, and I do config import, it's going to ignore everything in there. So I can do whatever settings I want for stage file proxy. It's separate from the, the, the common config. All right, so this is to screen grab. Up here, I basically said, hey, show me all the things that are in config local. Um, and so you can see we're getting back to, the, we're surfing back in config split to the settings. So I have my um, develop, develop stage. Um, so the idea is that, oh yeah, so this is local. So when I did a config export, these are the modules that it had settings like I had checkbox for. I was like, hey, the Devel stuff, um, I'm not sure, oh yeah, Devel blue bar, and then stage file proxy. Those are things that it, it exported right to, to this folder. And so only that environment cares about it. Um, and when I come over to, probably should have done a job of this. Uh, <laughs> LS config. I'm like, show me. So this is in config common. So this is the, the config for every environment. And we just saw it on the previous page where you had the, the different environments where it had, you know, the different we had um, local staging production. And then just the, the, the main setting for it. So these those config <laughs> YAMLs. <laughs> relate to these. So if I go to production, I'm still going to see these four. But in production, it's going to tell me that production here is active and the others are inactive. But the settings for all those are right there. Um, and then I come over here and I say, <laughs> I said, output the local. So just that one local that's active, what's underneath it? And it shows me this. Um, and one of the important things you should get under here is develop and stage file proxy. So underneath the folder, it stores the settings for those that you would expect when you modify settings on a page, you export, okay, you got the setting for the module you enable. But the um, system.extensions.yaml, which is the, the YAML file that tells your system what modules are enabled on your site. Uh, that one should never be in a local, and it should always be in a common. And it should be only the modules that are exist across every instance. But this beautiful little two lines there will tell it when it does a config in import that on my local environment, I want stage file proxy enabled. So it, it enables the module, and then it imports the config from the, you know, config slash local. So we kind of go on everything except for how it knows which environment you're on. That's that's the big unknown, right? So you have your, your common config, you have your individual environment configs, which is little files in them for whatever you needed. You have this, which tells which modules. Um, and let's see if we go to here. This, so if I go to the sites, Default, and I look at my settings.php on one of the sites. I don't, this isn't, don't take this as gospel. This is not something I do on every site that's rewritten in different ways on different sites. This is just the one I inherited and, and it worked for today's purposes. But in this case, this site includes all the subsettings. So I have a settings of platform, tugboat, Lando, local. And basically just looks through all of them and says, include them all. We want all of them. <laughs> but over each of them, and this is where your hosting is very, which hosting you have is important. 
First one is like Lando info equals get environment back. Well, if that doesn't exist, then I'm not in Lando, so just return and we ignore the rest of it. And there'll be something like that for Pantheon, there's something like that for Tugboat, there's something like that for Hot Stage. So it's interesting to find what that is for each. Um, another thing I've seen for this is rather than include them all, if there's a .env already in use, you might just put a .env variable for which environment we're on, and, and it depends on the host for that. Um, and the same thing can work for you know services. You know, this is dealing with setting up HP. We can also deal with services and make sure your local environment has code debug uh, going. Um, and when you scroll down here, you see so like. If you make if it is a Lando site, so if I'm running local, make it past that. Well, then it's like, oh, I right, here's the credentials, and it just goes through. You can put whatever you want in it. Down at the bottom of this file, it kind of says config, config split, config split local status equals truth, and that is an override. And that is why this says overridden. So each of those settings.php files, you know, the production one sets this variable to be overridden to true. Uh, you know, staging override and says, well, this one should be true. And so that is the, the key piece to, to telling config split which environment you're on. Uh, there is a way in config split if you run the commands in certain ways where you'd be like, you tell it to config import and to target local or include local or not local. I don't, I don't like typing all that out because I'm afraid I'm going to type it wrong. I just want to do config import, config export on every, every instance and be happy with it. And that's where this setup comes into play. Um, once you end up in a situation where your Drupal site has a setting.php and a services.php for each environment, and you've got config split installed. It it's just nice. It's like, oh, I'm local in local environment. I got my devel, I've got my you know stage file proxy. I don't have to worry about it. on staging, I've got my email reroute. And there's no chance, as long as we're just doing config import, that I'm gonna forget that I have email reroute you know, not enabled. It will always be enabled on staging, always be disabled in production. Uh, local has its own email handling thing, but um, this is the power when you start combining the different tools together of having this different configuration for every environment and a nice easy way to start pulling, pulling things down. You know, refresh your local, you're not worried about making any changes to settings afterwards. Um, and so normally I have a, a script that just pulls things down. And that script looks very similar on staging and local development. Let's see. And this is so if you you might have noticed I'm not the best formatter of graphics for a slideshow. But if you would like the slideshow, this is the, the QR code for it. Um, and I believe that is the last slide. I'm, I don't know if I talk quickly or I didn't put enough slides, but we've got about 15 minutes for questions. But I figure this might be more of a question and answer type of meeting than we need Yes. So to recap, you use a combination of config split and then config overrides. Um, and you use config split if you're enabling or disabling the module, then you prefer to use the config overrides to set. I guess settings of the things you're changing for the local. Yes, ish. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think I think what you're saying is right. Yeah. So it is. Um, you know, when we scroll up to this and this line here is a config override. We're taking it like we could look for this file. Mm -hmm. We could find that variable in it, and we could find that in you know, array variable. And you could see, you know you could see that in a YAML config file. You go to slash. In this particular instance, it would be slack uh, config slack common for all of them. Mm -hmm. And it would find this one thing and change it. And that would be the config override. And once that's overridden, config split will change how config import and export works because it now knows 
well, this one particular thing is, is active. You're in the local environment. So whenever I, I do a config import, if it export, I'm going to include, um, yeah, I'm going to include the config slash local. Um, so I was taking it one step further. You know, it's not just that, let's say the stage file proxy, if you had it enabled in all environments, you would just set the setting, set the path in the setting of PHP, or do you like to do that in the other file? Like you could set it right there in setting that PHP, setting that local that PHP to say like you use. You proxy. could, yes. Yeah. So you like that? You like so that. settings that PHP will not enable a module. Right. You can override something. That's the same as all and that's where the config split is required. Through just settings.php, if you wanted to put a bunch of setting overrides in everywhere, mm -hmm. you could do that, but it won't enable the module automatically right. without the config split, doing config import and enabling that module. And that's that was sort of the, the piece that was the, the yeah. resistant to get to in the very end was so I was trying to avoid config split for the longest time. And then once I embraced it, I was like, life is better. So do you like putting all the setting override in the PHP file, or do you like doing it in the when you export config so it goes in the config global? I like it. I like the, to minimize the settings of PHP um, because once you start getting into, hey, I've got four different services files, four different settings of PHP files. The cleaner those are. Mm -hmm. The easier it is for the developer to the next developer to absorb it, or me a year later to absorb it, and then it's like I can always just look in the config local and be like, ah, okay, I see what's going on there. Um, so I try. I want to keep the settings as clean as I can. So each thing I add in there should have a decision, a reason for it being added. To okay, it. makes sense. Um, I'm just curious about the config read only um, and the config uh, ignore. Mm -hmm. um, why you didn't use a config read only? You really have the white list, white list pattern. You can kind of put over there and kind of put the ignore configs like that. You want to open config mm -hmm. in production and you can put over. What's the difference? You know, difference between the read only has a white list pattern, like the thing that you can ignore. Actually, the same thing. Oh, whitelist pattern. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't. Did you use that before? What's the difference you saw? What's the benefit? I haven't really used the whitelist when it comes to config stuff. Um, I've, I've used config, and I've seen, you know, work with sites that have config ignore, but never like, I know the structure command of like config export, but don't do these. And then you can make that into a file, like your composer could, or something could, could add in a list of arrays. Um, I haven't really dealt with a site that was dealing with that, but config ignore, I have used and I like it, but it's hard to find a client that likes it. That, that would be usually my thing with that one is the clients are like, you know, it was, they're like, it's Friday. We, we just wanted to change this field on a form to say this or, or something along those lines. And then they find that they couldn't, and they're like, ah, so, um, in, in that case, that's why I've only like succeeded in like one or two instances where I got config and um, ignore install or config read only, sorry, config read only install. And with the config read only, it was a conversation I needed to have with the client before I just did it. Because I needed to sell it to them of like, this will save you money because every time I deploy, it's a lot easier on me. Um, but without that, they would, it would, you know, if I didn't have that argument for it, and I just like took away their power because normally with Drupal, I'm trying to empower the user to do all sorts of stuff and to like say, you know, it's the weirdest thing. You're like, why can't I edit this page all of a sudden? Oh, it's a config. You know, when you work with config, com, you know, config sync, and you do your first config export, it's just thousands of files because everything's a config in Drupal, and then. To take all that power from the the, the end user, it has to be the right fit for that one. Uh, but the config ignore, I just like if I want to config to be in the in my Git repo to be accurate. Um. So, have you had an issue where they sync doesn't sync? Yes. Everywhere. 
So from production to stage to local even? So when big sync, so it's one of those things you're like, oh, I got my like poser file, I got my config sync folder, I got all this stuff, all of the, my theme, and, and you're like, look at this code, this is this code great. And then the weird part is, is like that code will only work with a database from a certain point in time. <laughs> and each each time you roll out a new change to that, like you, you, your database is too far out of sync, it, mm -hmm. it won't work for the client might be using staging to test something out, right? They're, they're, you give them that them as a sandbox. Like if you're not sure, you're, you're afraid of doing this edit on production, go to staging, do stuff there, and then they do that. And then it just blows up your config. Um, or a, a common one would be, uh, you, were, you were doing something locally, you tried it out, and then later you're like, I'm just gonna delete that field, I don't need that field, or I don't need that reference or something. And then you go to deploy it up, and you had tested it further up, and now it's like I can't delete this config because there's content associated with it. And you're like, uh oh, all right, where is it? I need, I need to kill it. I need to kill it. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be another thing I run into with the whole like, ah, you know, everything's working out great, and all of a sudden, kaboom, like, nope. How do you resolve it though? So like, one of the things that is a very annoying bit from dealing with config for my purposes is line changes. So like it could be on line 19, but on my file locally, it's on line 15. It's just shifted down on production. And I don't know Are why. Are you on the same drop version on all of those environments? How could you get out of sync? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's like, I, I run to a server where like the drush, they set it up as like a global yeah. setting yeah. rather than like one that comes from your composer. Um, but there are times when there are times when I'm doing config sync, and every time I run it, it says there's six things that need to happen. Say import, it says succeeded. I do it again. It says six things need yeah, import yeah, yeah, and yeah. I need to. So in those cases, I'll do a config export, and usually you'll see it's just two lines swap. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll like but right, it doesn't export. Ever take. Yeah. So then I usually export and commit that, and usually it works. Question was, well, was like I would call that bug. There's a second bug I run into where I export config and like there's no changes. It's like a wipe out a config file and I'm exporting it and then it gets it. I haven't run into that run out before, out. just where I'm working. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah that key but... thing are annoying. I've oh. seen that problem happen in pure view, like DDEB or Land. Land, yeah. yeah. So if you've made the change and it hasn't had enough time to like. Take the changes out of a virtual machine. Oh, that's where I've seen that happen. Like, like, go right to my get, like, get okay. status. And it's like, no, uh -huh. change. like, I totally exported the config. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then if I wait like a minute and do it again, then it shows them. Oh, so I just say change to Lando and try it then. See if it oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't have to, you know, sure. I just thought you thought that your team had different, um, um, locally, you might have like some people use Lando, some people use. Uh, the depth then the config format it kind of shift a yeah. little bit yeah. between different and then this one um uh, this one import uh blender this one import data and then and so so that's why sometimes you know oh. yeah I, we also saw that yeah. exported yeah. imported again with solved the top cool. uh so i have a question um to go to your next slide and you thought of how we Manage a uh, down bump to the thing split, right? We we turn them on like that in our setting based on environment mm -hmm. variables. One of the issues that you can run into is if you have a config value that is shared, like you have a version of it for production and a version for it local, but you want to change the version that's for production, like you're updating something, and you go to export it and it updates local. How do you remember to like I gotta switch over to the production version to update the production version? Do you go, so like sometimes I'll forget, like I could go and like turn on the, the production. Oh, like you're talking about like, it. like I'm working, I'm just all this conversation was talking about common and local, but then yeah. I need to go to staging and do the same thing. Like yeah. I need to change a setting on staging that's only for the staging thing. Um, I might, that might be one of those situations where if I, if I really care, and it depends on the environment. Some environments you can't log, you can't have to change into yeah. staging or something. So for those, you can run config export and you can give it parameters that lets it know like you want to export to your staging folder 
even though you're on local, and you could do something like that to to get those same configs, um, or you could just cheat in some cases and copy copy pasta between you know one or the other. You know, as long as you're you get you go to your get differences, you're like, oh, that looks right. But no, I I would try. I haven't like really run into that. But my my first gap would be to go find those commands that let you because if you don't have this set up, you don't. If you don't do it in the settings.php, you can still export only to this environment and only import from this environment. So you could still do all the staging and production specific things when you're doing it on dev. But yeah, that's going to be one of those where you'll deploy it and you'll forget about it. And then they're like, didn't we just pay for this feature? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And it ended up in your... your I need to go clear cash. <laughs> Doesn't work if you give the client a whole clear cash button at the top. Um, I think we could do change the environment on the rule yeah. and fraud. Mm -hmm. Or I open the mobile. Yeah, you really have to change it. Like, oh, then we are wrong split. What are your first five making that environment um, variables? Are you just talking about the environment variables that are already in the environment that you're using? Are you creating? I created dot env. So normally what I do is in the Git repo, if I have a site that uses dot env, so it's like a composer, include whatever dot env tool to get you to have that. And then in my Git repo, there'll be a dot env dot example where all the variables that I want set should be in there. And then I copy that to my dot env. And that is in my git ignore. So it's never committed up. And that's the one where I put like my authentication stuff. So it is plain text, but it's never in git. And um, if you really, so, and then, but that works great on some hosting environments, but not every hosting environment, you're not gonna get .ub to. And that's where like other things come in, or maybe I think one was like Ansible, where you're trying to like use Ansible to encrypt authentication tokens inside your code so you can commit them, but you have to have like a super long key and part of your deployment script to decrypt the file once it reaches the final destination. And I'm still working to wrap my head around that, but I'm working on that. Um, but most of the sites I work on that I need the .env for, it's already, it's like on a cPanel or something like that. So I can SSH in, I can, I can just type out the .env. And once the environments are set up, it's great. Um, but then you deal with like Tugboat, where like you go to Platform SH and you say, I'm doing a pull request, and all of a sudden an entirely new mini site is spun up and whole new URL, and you, you, you just got to like have different workflows for that. Um, but even on Tugboat, uh, it does work. If there is an environment variable like this, you can be fine. So you can at least get your settings.php to know that you're on Tugboat. I'm still trying to wrap my head around him, but I was like, I'm using it because I inherited the site with it, but I haven't like fully dug into that one yet. It's space, and the only place I've seen it, it trip me up is where I have like help and solar stuff integrated. So, like, if I have views that are driven by on, on solar, then how both of them do, 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 do well for, for, for testing nodes. Mm -hmm. I'm happy on solar. I always have to go and rebuild index. Yeah, yeah. It's just that like it doesn't unless you just, unless you depending on what your your account with Tumbo is, you might not get an actual solar search server that with your environments uh, views. So now I'm going to be shameless. I'm going to ask Alfred here to take my picture. Oh, yeah. You know, because like you know, I don't, I don't, I don't present you know as often as Mike over there does. But um, okay, I get there. Others that part. I want to get back to the title page. Yeah. But see, my, Mike. So, so all right, I that. and don't put authentication credentials in code. Configure code. That's my my first pet peeve of like or philosophy thing. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Check <laughs> <laughs> uh, out. I took I take time to put. <laughs>